Hi friends, here is Lucas. This is a free lesson from my best-selling course about Kotlin coroutines and flow for Android development. You can find the link in the description to get the course for a nice discount. Our use case here has a small problem. When we go back again and leave the use case, and then when we open it up again, you can see that here is at the beginning no loading indicator before the initial stock data is displayed. So let's do it one more time. If we go back and open it up again, there is just a white screen and then suddenly the stock list appears. And what we want to have here is a loading indicator. But what's actually a nice way of implementing such a loading indicator? Well, I have an idea. But before we realize this idea, we should learn a little bit about lifecycle operators for flows. There are two operators for Kotlin flows that I would call lifecycle operators. And these two are on start and on completion. With the onStart operator, we can define an action that is performed right before the flow gets collected. Let's simply log out that the flow starts to be collected. It's important to mention that the action in the onStart operator, so in our case the print statement, is invoked as soon as the collection from the flow starts and not when the first item is emitted. The other lifecycle operator is on completion. And this one allows us to specify an action that is executed after the flow completes. A flow can either complete normally, so when all the values of the flow got emitted, or exceptionally, when the flow throws an exception. Let's just output flow has completed when the flow completes. In the onCompletion block, we have access to a parameter called cause, which is of the type throwable. This parameter tells us whether the flow completed normally or exceptionally. When the flow completed normally, cause is null. And when the flow completed exceptionally, cause holds the exception that was thrown in the flow. As you can see, when working with Kotlin Flow, or in a reactive programming style in general, we end up with a code style that is quite different to ordinary, imperative and sequential code. Here we have a kind of pipeline where each of the operators is executed one after the other. From now on, Let's call such a construct a flow processing pipeline. For our lifecycle operators on start and on completion, it is important to note that these operators can be installed at any position within the flow processing pipeline. So we could also move the on start operator to the very end, uh, right before launch in. And the behavior here would be actually the same. We can also define multiple on start operators in our pipeline. For example, we can have one on start operator in the end and one at the beginning of our pipeline. Let's also adjust the print statements a little bit so that we can differentiate between those two. And when we now run the app, and navigate to the first use case. And then 
open up logcat and filter for the log messages. You can see that the code in the on start blocks was executed when the flow started to be collected. What's interesting here is that the code in the second on start block was actually executed before the one before. The on completion block is not executed since we basically have an endless flow which never completes because we have a while true loop in the flow and it emits a new stock list every six to seven seconds. What's also interesting to note is that we can call emit in the on start and on completion blocks in order to emit new items to our flow processing pipeline. Let's now talk about two important terms for flow processing pipelines upstream and downstream. Let's have a look at the on completion block here, for example. Every operator that happens before this block is the upstream for this block. And every operator that is executed afterwards is the downstream for this block. If we now want to emit a new item in the on completion block now, for example, a new stock list, we can simply call emit there and for instance simply emit an empty list. And this now means that the item is emitted downstream to the next operator below the on completion block. And this one is the on each operator. We will talk about operators that only affect the upstream of the pipeline like for instance the flow on operator later in this course. Most operators though only affect the downstream. Let's now do something that is actually useful. Our initial goal was to show a loading indicator when the user opens up the use case. On start is the perfect lifecycle operator for this. So we don't need an on completion block, so let's remove it again and also remove the second on start block and also remove the print statement in the first on start block. In order for the activity to show a loading indicator, we simply need to set the UI state dot loading state to our live data property. So let's emit the loading UI state in our on start block. The next operator downstream, so the on each operator, won't receive a list of stocks anymore, but instead it will now receive an UI state. So let's adjust the code accordingly. However, there is an issue. Android Studio tells us now that we need to emit a list of stocks instead of an UI state. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at the documentation of the onStart operator. OnStart is an extension function on a flow that emits the generic type T. And this flow on which the onStart operator is called on is also called the original flow. In our action block, we can operate on a flow collector with type T. With a flow collector, as you can see in its interface definition, we can emit new values that need to be of that type T. Let's go back to the documentation of onStart. The action block operates on a flow collector with type T. And therefore, we can only emit this type T, which is the same type that the original flow emits. And since the original flow in our flow processing pipeline is the latest stock list flow of the stock price data source, 
we can only emit stocks here in our onStart operator and not an UI state. So we somehow need to call on start on a flow of UI states instead of on a flow of stocks. And how can we do that? Maybe we can use an operator that we already know, the on each operator, to convert a flow of stocks into a flow of UI states. Well, convert is not really the right word for this. What flow operators actually do is they perform an operation and then they return a new flow. So we need an operator that returns a new flow that emits UI states. So let's just try to use on each before on start and let's try to emit UI state dot success from it and pass the list of stocks. However, this doesn't seem to work. Let's have a look at the documentation of on each to find out what's the problem here. On each is an extension function on a flow that emits the generic type T but it also returns a flow of that type T. So we can't create a flow that emits a different type than the original flow with on each. On each can actually only be used for side effects. It doesn't manipulate the stream of items, but we can trigger some other actions with it, like setting the live data property, like we do at the end of our pipeline here. What we need is an operator that can return a flow that emits a different type than the original flow. So the return type of this operator must not be T, but some other generic type. When thinking about this, the operator map, which most people probably know from collection processing, comes to mind. Let's see if this operator is available for flows as well. Oh yes, there it is. Let's have a look at its documentation. The documentation says, returns a flow containing the results of applying the given transform function to each value of the original flow. So this sounds promising. And indeed, the type that the returned flow emits, namely the type R here, is different than the type T of the original flow. So with map, we are now able to pass a transform block that receives a stock list and transforms it into an UI state and then emits this UI state to the downstream. Oh no, there is still a problem. The receiver in onStart, as you can see in the IDE hint here, is UIState.success. So we need to cast the success UI state in the map operator to the UI state supertype. I'm not sure why Android Studio makes this cast gray to indicate that this cast isn't needed, since it definitely is needed. But anyway, now our feature should now show a loading indicator and let's check if this really works. So we have launched the app again and when we open up the first use case, you can see that perfect, the loading indicator shows up and when the first stock list is emitted, the list of stocks is then received. So let's try it again. Enter the use case. Here it is, the loading indicator. So in this lecture, you learned about the lifecycle operators on start and on complete. And in the next lecture, you will see how we can improve our view model code here even further.
So if you want to dive deeper into coroutines and flow, then I can highly recommend my complete course that contains everything to fully understand and successfully use coroutines and flow in your apps. We will together create a stock life tracking app that uses flow extensively. You will also learn about state flows, shared flows, channels, and many, many other topics. You can find a link to the course in the description and I would love to have you on board.